Elisha promises food. But Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow, about this time, a seer of fine flour should be sold for a shekel, and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Then the captain, on whose hand the king leaned, said to the man of God, if the Lord himself should make windows in heaven, could this thing be? But he said, you shall see it with your own eyes, but you shall need not to eat of it. Now, there were four men who were lepers at the entrance to the gate. And they said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? If we say, let us enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. So now come, let us go over to the camp of the Syrians. If they spare our lives, we shall live, and if they kill us, we shall but die. So they arose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. But when they came to the edge of the camp of the Syrians, behold, there was no one there. For the Lord had made the army of the Assyrians hear the sound of chariot and of horses, the sound of a great army, so that they said to one another, Behold, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Egypt to come against us. So they fled away in the twilight and abandoned their tents and their horses and their donkeys, leaving the camp as it was, and fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the edge of the camp, they went into a tent and ate and drank. And they carried off silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried off things from it and went and hid them. Then they said to one another, we're not doing right. This day is a day of good news. If we're silent and wait until the morning light, punishment will overtake us. Now therefore come, let us go and tell the king's household. So they came and called to the gatekeepers of the city and told them, we came to the camp of the Syrians and behold, there was no one to be seen or heard there. Nothing but the horses tied and the donkeys tied and the tents as they were. Then the gatekeepers called out and it was told within the king's household. And the king rose in the night and said to his servants, I will tell you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we are hungry. Therefore, they've gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the open country, thinking when they come out of the city, we shall take them alive and get into the city. And one of his servants says, let some men take five of the remaining horses, seeing that those who are left here will fare like the whole multitude of Israel who have already perished. Let's send and see. So they took two horsemen, and the king sent them after the army of the Syrians, saying, Go and see. So they went after them as far as the Jordan, and behold, all the way was littered with garments and equipment that the Syrians had thrown away in their haste, and the messengers returned and told the king. Then the people went out and plundered the camp of the Syrians. So a seer of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two seers of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Now, the king had appointed the captain on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate, and the people trampled him in the gate so that he died, as the man of God had said, when the king came down to him. For when the man of God had said to the king, Two seers of barley should be sold for a shekel and a seer of fine flour for a shekel about this time tomorrow in the gate of Samaria. The captain had answered the man of God. If the Lord himself should make windows in heaven, could such a thing be? And he said, you shall see it with your own eyes, but you shall not eat of it. And so it happened to him, for the people trampled him in the gate and he died. Let's pray. Lord, I ask that as we come to your word, that you speak by your spirit. Holy Spirit, open our hearts, open our ears, open our mind. Grant understanding, grant insight. Lord, would you speak to everyone in the way they will understand. And may your church be built up your people are defied, and your name be glorified. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Daniel, future of faith. I think there was a refusal 
of the status quo in pursuit of possibilities with God. So the next four weeks, we'll hit themes around adventures of faith. Adventures speak of something exciting, very unusual experience. Sometimes a bold, usually risky undertaking. Some kind of a hazardous action with an uncertain outcome. That's an adventure. Now, when it comes to adventures, count me out. I don't like heights. So if I never go to any theme park, I'm not going to go there. I don't go on any ride, even the one on the floor, because when I go spin round and round, I'm dizzy. We go on holidays. My wife is like um, a, a, a cab commandant. <laughs> she do this, do this, do this. Me, I want to sleep. <laughs> but I think I'm right. Holidays, that you be walking, walking, walking. You're tired. You want a rest. So she go eat, sleep, and repeat. But well, some people want to, they will go this way, they go and they climb this and climb that. When you're, if you're planning that, count me out. But when it comes to the faith, adventure, I'm excited. I want to take risk with God. I want to go to uncertain places. I want to go where I don't know what to do. Where my wisdom fails, my strength fails. Where my feet cannot find depth. And then I learn to lean on God. That's an adventure. And I believe that this faith is an adventure that God calls all of us to go on adventure with him. But today, on this installment on adventures of faith, I'm going to talk to you about faith for advance. So that's the title of today, Faith for Advance. And this speaks of faith that moves forward and causes you to rise to your next level. You didn't get that. You know, when you, you give your life to Christ, a lot of us, you know, we get we saved, and then we, we sit down in church, we clap, and we read the Bible, we hear messages, and that's all to it. That's miserable. There is something more. I'm hungry for more, and I won't die until I, until I, until I experience the more. You know, faith for advance is that faith that propels you, moves you forward, takes you to your next level. For everyone here, for every one of us, there is a next level for you. And when you stay on one level forever, you are insulting God. God wants you to rise to your next level. And that can only happen when you take a step forward. Hebrews 11 one said, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Those who have assurance and have conviction, they are willing to go on adventures with God. They defy the status quo so that they can obtain promises God has made to them. The story that was you know, so well read to you by Anna of those um, four lepers at the gate of Samaria has a great deal to teach us about adventures of faith. It has a lot to teach us about faith for advance. I, 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 I note here six lessons we can learn from this story. One, that faith is activated by God's word. Faith is activated by God's word. Secondly, that faith for advance refuses the status quo. If you're going to advance, if you're going to go forward, you're going to go into the next level, you have to say no to now. The safe zone, the comfort zone where you're comfortable 
is an obstacle to getting you to where you're supposed to be. Thirdly, it gives us wisdom to make forward-looking decisions. Decisions that go look beyond now. Somebody said that uh, champions make decisions that create the future they want. But losers make decisions that create the present they want. If you if, 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 for advance, it helps us to make forward-looking decisions. Number four, that faith for advance requires courage to take forward steps. Courage to take forward steps. Like Leo referred, when, when, when the Peter was seeing the wave rave, that Jesus said, come. With all the waves, it takes unusual courage to step out of the boat that is safe and secure into a turbulent water. Where you have now to defy Archimedes principles and the principles of flotation. Where you go beyond what you're used to, what you know, where your, all, your, all your strings are cut off. It takes courage to do that. Number five, advancing in faith requires you to choose to be a blessing. If you're going to go forward in faith, if you're going to move forward, you have to choose to be a blessing. And number six, when we advance in faith, it fulfills God's word. So, I'm just going to get straight into it. Faith for, I'm going to uh, go through this passage um, verse by verse. Don't be scared. We'll live here today. <laughs> so, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to look at those six, uh, uh, six uh, lessons. I'm going to just uh, you know, share a few thoughts on them. And I'll bring it to a close. We're well, saying that faith for advance, first of all, it starts with a word from God. It starts with a word from God. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. If you're going to have faith that will help you move forward, in the directions of God's plans and purposes. You have to have an understanding of God's plan. You have to have an understanding of his purpose. If you're going to walk into the future he has for you, you have to get an insight, a revelation of the future. So faith for advance, it starts with a word from the Lord. Faith comes by, as you hear the word of God right now, faith is arising. Faith comes from hearing there won't be any faith except there's a word from the Lord. When Eli Elisha said, by this time tomorrow, there will be abundance. That's a prophetic word given. That's the word from the Lord. And in that moment, God began to act activate faith in the hearts of men. That's when those four lepers who have been there were not told how long they lived at the gate. But in that moment, something rose up in them and they made a different decision. I will come to that in a moment. He said, Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. Hear the word of the Lord. says the Lord, tomorrow, about this time, a measure of choice meal will be sold for a shekel and two measures of belly for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Then the captain on whose hand the king leaned, said to the man of God, even if the Lord were to open the windows in sky, could such a thing happen? And then Elisha said to him, is that what you're saying? Okay, you will see it, but you will not test it. Was saying that faithful advance is always activated by the word of God. Elisha gave a word, and faith was activated. And you need to understand that God's word is not circumstantial. If you know the context then, for Elisha to say, by this time tomorrow, there will be abundance, that was crazy. Cuckoo. 
because they have been under siege for a long time. It was so bad, so much famine in the land that people, women are killing their children and eating. This is history. It happened. That was what brought the king to look for Elisha to kill him. Because two women were fighting. One said, we agreed with this woman to kill my child. We finished eating and they saw that tomorrow she will bring her child. Then they ate, the, they ate this woman's child today. Tomorrow he said, now bring your child. He said, no, I'm not bringing my child though. He said, no, I would rather die than eat my, my child. She was smarter. Don't ever eat your child. And so they were started quarreling and fighting. He said, why did you make me kill your child? You deceived me. You cheated me. You were not smart. And so the king heard this. And he said, how can this happen in my kingdom and we have a man of God? He said, if there's life in me, Elijah will not be alive. We are seeing him today. And so he went for, to look for Elijah to kill, Elisha to kill him. And when he got to Elisha, Elisha said, okay, by this time tomorrow there will be abundance. That's why the the ADC said to him, are you all right? That's a false prophet. Do you know, what we, do you know, do you know the situation of the, of the nation? Do you know the circumstances we are in? The problem with focusing on your circumstances is that when you focus on your circumstances, it drains faith. Being preoccupied with your problems will blind you to opportunities. When you keep your head down, you won't, see, you won't see what is in front of you. You are more likely to crash when you are walking with your face down. Have you seen all those kids crossing the road on your phone? If you're here, I'm not, I'm not picking on you. But if your face is down, you're more likely to crash. Focusing on your problems, it denies you access to the word of God, access to the promises of God, access to the possibilities with God. Nothing grieves God more than when we doubt him. When we don't believe him, nothing grieves God more than that. That's why he said in Psalm 78, 21 to 22, he said, therefore, when the Lord heard, he was full of rage. A fire was kindled against Jacob. His anger mounted against Israel. Why? Because they had no faith in God and did not trust in his saving power. Nothing ever grieves God more than to doubt him. And so when that man said, if we go open, we don't even, can, can this thing be? Elisha said to him, you've crossed the line. And because of this, you will see it for you to know that God is able to do it. But because of your unbelief, you will not taste of it. Don't you ever doubt God's word? Don't allow your circumstances to make you doubt the possibilities with God. Because God is not controlled by your circumstances. It's not limited by what you're going through. It's not limited by your constraints. When he gives a word, he's not saying, okay, you know, the way the economy is now, the interest rate is this. So, say tomorrow the interest rate is 0.5%. The Bank of England, they're not going to meet overnight. So, how can it, how can this, God doesn't do that. When he says a word, it comes to pass. Why? Because he is God. He's in control. So, God is not looking at your circumstances to decide what is going to happen. Your circumstances do not decide what God wants to do. God causes your circumstances to honor his word. A word from God, a word of God, a prophetic word is the basis of faith. To move forward in faith, we must receive and believe a word from God. So, faith for advance, it starts with a word from the Lord, but secondly, he refuses the status quo. Look at 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 3. He said, Now there were four leprous men 
outside the city gate, who said to one another, why should we sit here until we die? Outside the city gate speaks of the liminal space. You know what a liminal space is? It is the transition, the intermediate. It's just unsettling area. You know when you're, you're neither here or there, you're not, um, you're not an adult, you're not a teenager. It's the, the liminal space where you're neither here nor there and it's characterized by confusion. It is the age where you don't know what to do. Confusion sets in. Have I been there? This, what it means to sit at the gate. Because you're at the gate, you're not entering in. You're not exiting. It's not a good place to be. And this man, why were they at the gate? Because that's the only place they can be. Um, I'm going to tell you, this is personal now, because it, it just speaking of this now, it's very emotional for me. Because I remember in 2021, I was sitting in my office, <clears throat> in the place where I used to, uh, for my church where I used to pastor, I was sitting in my office one day, and I heard this line, why sit here until you die? I said, this, this, I said to myself, that's not, God, I'm in your house, I'm serving you here. So that can, is it God speaking to me like that way? I, but it was very clear to me. I was not dreaming. I was, say, so why sit here until you die? And then I knew very clearly in that moment that that season was over. That was time to move on. I didn't know where to, but at least I know one thing. It was time to move on. That was the catalyst for deciding to resign and leave and then, and then you know, take the next steps. It was very clear to me. Just when I read this, I read this again yesterday, it just came back to me, hit me. Why sit here until you die? Is anybody here in that liminal space? Are you in that transition where you don't know what to do? Where you're confused? If you're going to advance, you have to leave this space. The situation of the lepers were so dire, so bad. They were outcasts from society. By reason of their condition, they were lepers. Leviticus 13, 46, and Numbers 5, 1 to 4, the lepers are not allowed in. They're supposed to be outside. So they were lepers. That's why they were outside the city gate. They are not supposed to interact with human, other people so they don't infect anyone. Secondly, there was famine in the city. By being outside the gate... People who are coming from the gate, coming from the city, at least we'll be able to drop something for them. But because there's famine, nobody has anything to drop. So they're in a difficult place. Second, thirdly, the Aramean armies were on the other side. So nobody's coming out, nobody's going in. They were stuck in that liminal space. Death was imminent. Death was imminent. They were just waiting to die. It's, not, it's a question of when, not if. Some situations in life are so bad that we're just left to accept the inevitable. But change happens when you refuse to accept the inevitable. Until you refuse to accept the inevitable, change will not occur. That's why Job 14 verse 14 says, if mortals die, would they live again? All the days of my service, all the days of my trouble, all the days of my waiting, will I wait until my release will come? Will I wait until my change will come? I, it doesn't matter how long it takes, I won't give up, I will wait until my change comes. When you accept the situation, change will not come. 
Change happens only when you say no to where you are. Psalm 118 verse 17 said, I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. You are in that place and they said, death is beckoning on you. He said, there's no hope. This is the end. If you accept that this is the end, that becomes your end. But he said, no, this is not my end. Then you are ready to move on. You cannot change what you are willing to accept. Whatever you are willing to accept, whatever you are willing to tolerate, you cannot change. And don't complain for what you permit. If you are if you're comfortable with a situation, don't complain about it. Until you refute the status quo, change will not come. Faithful advance requires us to say no to where the way things are. I don't care how long they have been, we have to say no to the way things are for us to get into where God wants us to be. So long as God, that is not God's word for you, so long as God, that is not God's cancer for you, you have to reject it and say no to them, then you will experience what God has promised you. Faithful advance he starts with a word from the Lord and he refuses the status quo, but also he makes forward-looking decisions. He makes forward-looking decisions. In 2 Kings, the passage we read, verse 4 says, if we say, let us enter the city, famine is in the city. And we shall die there. But if we say, if we sit here, we shall also die. Therefore, I've done the cost-benefit analysis. This is my conclusion. Let us desert to the Aramean camp. There are two possibilities there. They might spare us or they might kill us. Now, if they spare our lives, we shall live. If they kill us, <laughs> we're dead already anyway. They understood their situation and they made an informed and a calculated decision. When you're stuck in that liminal space, you don't know what to do, understand where you are. Understand the situation and just know, I've been going on this meal, I've been trying to help myself for 20 years, it hasn't worked. Get some sense in your head. You can't help yourself. There is one who can help you. Go to him. I have a friend who was going through a problem. Somebody was telling me that can help. I said, the only thing I have to offer is God. And if God is not enough for her, I can't help her. It takes faith to, it takes faith to see hope in a bleak situation. The lepers in that moment... Because faith has been released, they saw a possibility of life. That if they go into the enemy's camp, there's a chance. 0.00001% that they will spare us. You know what? So long as there's a probability of a possibility, I will grab it. Your decisions decide your future, not your circumstances. The future of your problem, the future of your situations is determined by your decisions. Those lepers were doomed to die, but they made a decision. And their decision changed their future. Not just their future, but the future of other people. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have said before you life and death, blessing and curses. But say, I give you the answer to this puzzle. I give you the answer to this exam question. Say, choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Your decisions decide your future. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter how bad the situation is. 
the decision you make will, de will decide the, 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 the end of your situation. Those lepers, they chose. They chose right, and their things were cha changed. Jeremiah 6, 6 verse 16 says, Thus says the Lord, stand in the crossroads, in the liminal spaces, and look, and ask for the ancient past, where the good way, way lies, and walk in it, and find rest to your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. What a sad place. Have we seen people who are, they're in a problem, they're in a situation, but they won't take any counsel. They won't take offer for help. And then you're crying, my this, my this, my this. They have so many identities they hold on to, they don't want to let go of it. Don't let me go there. But what we're saying is this. When you're in that crossroads, what are the offers? What are the possibilities? If there's something God is saying, if there's a, a possibility in God, grab it. That's how change comes. Those who win and those who lose, they are separated by the decisions they make. Stop building your life around your pain. Make decisions and create the future you want. Did somebody hear me? Stop building a, an altar around your pain, around your problems, around your situations. My this, my this, my this, my that. But make decisions to create the future you want. Your decision will decide your future. Number four, it takes faith for advance also takes forward steps, positive forward steps. I won't read the whole thing, but you look at verse, seven, verse uh, five to eight. I just want to highlight two, two, uh, two phrases there. So they arose at twilight. Did you hear that? Those lepers, they, when they made the decisions, they didn't start there. So of us make decisions and we, stand, we, we sit on the decision. We make the decision, put it in the freezer, in the, in the fridge. When it cools down, we put it in the freezer and let it freeze. They made a decision and they acted on their decision. Does that make sense what I'm saying? If you're going to advance in faith, it's not enough to make a decision. How many people have made, made New Year resolutions? I'll be in gym three, you know, five, 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 five days a week. And by February 15th, you've forgotten about it. It's not enough to make decision. You have to take positive forward steps. They made the decision and they acted on that decision. They rose at twilight. Okay, so I will, and I look, I look at verse 7. Say, Talking about the, 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 the Syrians. So they fled away in the twilight. Let me break it down for you. The moment those four lepers start taking the steps towards the Iranians at twilight, in that instance, the, 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 the Aramean camp, the army, they heard the sound of an army. You don't understand what I'm saying. The lepers, some of them, their, their, their feet are cut off. They have no toes. They were making steps. And that step sounded like the step of the, the sound of horses, chiros coming against them. How could that be? How could that be? That is only possible because when you act in obedience to the word of God, when you take steps of faith, God does the impossible. He takes your natural and preposes upon it his supernatural. He magnifies your little efforts to produce disproportionate results. He goes beyond your arithmetic for adding one plus one to geometric proportions. There's a difference between 2 plus 2 
plus two. And two raised to power three. Anybody understand the arithmetic here? There's a difference. What we're saying is this, that your step of faith will act activate your miracle. What happened next to the lepers was dependent on what they did. They took that step and God acted. One person's step of faith will bring about the fulfillment of God's promises, God's words to another person, to an, a family, to a church, to a community. I'm being careful saying this. I took a, a step of faith to decide to plant tenure. And as many as are here now, and as many as will come to worship God in this place, they are going to be blessed as a result of a step of obedience. And as we are worshiping, I see God, I see the presence of God rising from here and going beyond, and going beyond, and going beyond. That the whole of this area, that from here, blessing of God, the water, the blessing of God will flow from here and water the whole region around here. Amen. That there will be showers of God's blessings coming from this house and blessing the coming that because anyone who lives within Chesant, within the borough of Broxburn, will be blessed. Amen. That's the mandate of God. That's the promise of God. Amen. And that's because somebody didn't just take a, make a decision. He took a step. What step are you going to take? Genesis 12, verse 1 to 2. Say, now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. The land that I will show you. No, no postcode. So he, he wants to uh, put the destination on the GPS. No postcode, no street address, no town. The land that I will show you. He say, go and I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. And make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Are we not blessed today because of the, of the obedience of Abraham? One man's step of, 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 of obedience will bring blessing to generations. To advance in life, we must be prepared to take step, little steps of faith in response to God's word. Why do we do that? Because when we do, God magnifies our natural steps and creates a supernatural effect. The leper steps, he magnified it to sound like horses and gyros. Until you take that step, nothing will happen. Your step of faith is more powerful than organized systems. I wish somebody would hear me today. Your step of faith, of obedience, is more powerful than prejudices of men. It's more powerful than forces of evil. It's more powerful than even an entire nation's army. It doesn't matter what the, an organized system that you set up against you, structures that are supposed to crumble you, that make sure, put a ceiling over you. When you take a step of faith, those structures, those ceilings will crumble because God will act on your step of faith. Breakthroughs, answers to steps of faith. You're looking for a breakthrough. It requires, there's a step you need to take. And when you take that step, your breakthrough will come. Your actions are proof of your faith. If you believe God's word, you're going to act on it. And what you do is the evidence that you believe what you believe. So advancing in faith requires us to have the courage to take positive forward steps. God will not act until we take our first step. The question you have to ask God today is, what's my next step? You sang that song, Take Me Deeper. 
where my, you know, where my feet is, where I'm out of my depths. Are you willing to take that step? Number five, to advance in faith. Faith for advance chooses to be a blessing. Uh, verse 9 to 11, it say, they, they, they asked this question. They, they, you know, they got there, there was no one. And all they saw was food and clothing and gold. You know, I don't, one was saying, why are they carrying gold in those tents? The armies in those times, when they go raid, they, 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 they loot. And they carry, because they, they can travel for years, or even two years, three years before they get home. So they carry all their loot with them. And so everyone in the camp, there are gold and all sorts of stuff in there. In there. But when they heard this a mightier army coming against them, everyone, everyone, they forgot themselves, left everything. All the loot they carried over these months or years, they left them to run for their life. And these lepers, they came. First of all, they were hungry, they ate food. And then everyone said, okay, I like that, I like that clothes. And then he took that one. And they got the clothes and they said, okay, maybe I can do with, you know, a new pair of trainers. They got the, tra got the tra trainers and then they said, okay, I'm dressed now. Okay, let me, let me get for tomorrow. They got that, they went and hid it and they came back again. And, and they keep going back and forth, back and forth. And let me tell you, when God gives you a blessing, it's beyond that you can handle. When God blesses, it's beyond your ability to handle. What God gave those lepers, they can't handle it. Which is to say, it wasn't just for them. It was, they, got, they were just a catalyst to fulfilling God's word. I hope somebody is hearing me. And they said to themselves, say, what are we doing? What we're doing is wrong. This is a day of good news. If we keep silent, evil will befall us. Will somebody hear that today? It is good to enjoy your discovery, to enjoy your freedom, but it is great to share it. To sit on your discoveries and the loot of your faith is offensive to God. And that can attract judgment. Jesus said to his disciples in Matthew 10 verse 8, he said, cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, Cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. Freely you've received, freely give. First Corinthians 4, verse 7 says, For we see, for who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you have not received? And if you received it, why do you boast as if it's not a gift? The point is this: that other people's freedom. Other people's salvation is tied to, this, to your steps of faith. So you must not lose sight of our purpose. Did you get that? We're not here to have a good time. We're here, to, we're here to make sure that those who sit in darkness, they will come to the light. Don't lose sight of that. We're praying every day in this season on Zoom, and I gave permission, you can be under your duvet, and that's Okay. You don't need to fight. We're just praying. Because we're praying for God to come upon this, up, upon this place, to come upon Penya, to come upon the mission he's given to us. We can't just think, have a good time. We have to be about our mission. So while we're here, we should think of all the people that don't know the Lord here. All the prodigals that need to come home. All the people that sit in darkness that need to see the light of God. We must be sharing our discoveries. Every discovery you make in your journey, be willing to share it. If faith for advance demands that we be a blessing. Finally, if faith for advance fulfills God's word. Look at verse 16 to 20. I'll just highlight the two, two phrases there. It says, according to the word of the Lord. Again, he said, just as the man of God had said. Verse 20 says, it did, it did 
indeed, I like that word, it did indeed happen to him. As just, just in case you're not sure, what was saying that what Elisha said to him happened exactly the way he said it. So it indeed happened to him. When this leper's advice, the result of what happened fulfilled the word that Elisha the prophet gave the previous evening, which the lepers were not aware of. Are you aware? Are you aware that you are an answer to somebody's prophetic word? That you are an answer to somebody's prayer? Do you know that the steps you're taking today will fulfill a word for somebody? That somebody be praying for their loved one to come to Christ? And you take a step of faith and speak to them, invite them to church, and they come and they encounter Jesus Christ and they are saved. That step of faith has resulted in answering somebody's prayer, in fulfill a promise, fulfill a promise for somebody. When we take that step of faith, when we advance in faith, it fulfills God's word. That's why Isaiah 44, 26 says, Talking about God, God said, who confirms the word of his servant and fulfills the prediction of his messenger. That's our God. The moment Elisha spoke that word, God has to back that word and make sure I will confirm it. I will check it. Who says to Jerusalem, it shall be inhabited? Who says to Chesent, the glory of God will shine upon you? Amen. Who says to the cities and the, all the villages of Broxburn, the light of God has come? Amen. That they shall be built. And I will raise up the ruins. When we take steps of faith, who bring about the fulfillment of God's promises. Every promise of God requires a step of faith on our side. Are you willing to take that step? Instead of wallowing in defeat and self-pity, God calls us to stand up and take steps of faith to freedom. Your miracle, the promises of God for your life, the dreams God has given you, will answer to your next step of faith. Faith doesn't reward playing safe. It rewards those who take risks with God. I close with it thoughts. Hebrews 11.6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Let me break that down. He said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. That any, whoever, and whoever means whoever, that anyone who will come to God, who will approach God, first must believe that God exists, and that he rewards those who seek him. That means that to, to, to live a life that pleases God. Who wants to please God here? So I have an army here who are willing to move forward in faith. To live a life that pleases God must be willing to move forward in faith. To advance in faith. Advance in faith requires you to believe God. To believe his words. And take steps. Forward steps in line with God's directives. And you do that knowing that God rewards every step of faith. Say he rewards those who seek him. That when we take steps of faith, we take a step towards him, he rewards. That should be a motivation for you. Those who move forward in faith are the true seekers of God. They qualify for the reward of seekers. Is anyone seeking God today? If you are seeking God today, you qualify for the reward. The reward of those who seek God.